What's cracking, y'all? You are now watching Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. What's cracking, y'all? Back with another reaction video from the YouTube channel Secret Base. Go check it out. Great, great content there, man. I tell you that. They do good work there. Um, so this one, Tim Hardaway and Allen Iverson have beef over a signature move. Obviously, this has to do with the crossover. It has been a uh, debate for many, 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 many years now, decades, about who has the greatest uh, crossover in NBA history. Usually, it's Tim Hardaway, uh, Allen Iverson. You'll get some people talk about Jay, uh, Jay Crossover, Jamal Crawford. Uh, some people try to throw Kyrie Irving and Steph Curry in there. Uh, Kyrie Irving, amazing ball handler, probably the greatest ball handler in NBA history. Uh, but specifically crossover, no, nah, I can't. I can't say he's better than AI when it just comes to the crossover or Tim Hardaway. Uh, Rafer Olsen doesn't get a lot of mentions either. Uh, even, I mean, there's, there's other plays. But anyway, let's get into this video. This is Tim Hardaway, a small, great NBA point guard, famous for beating defenders with his deadly crossover dribble. This is Allen Iverson, a smaller, greater NBA point guard, even more famous for beating defenders with his deadly crossover dribble. And so, there's your problem right there. Let's just state up front that this is a low heat beef. These guys don't seem to hate each other. It's something else, something smaller. Perhaps the first indication that the Tim Hardaway versus Allen Iverson feud is unique is its most thorough documentation to date, chapter 11 of Mike Prada's excellent book, Spaced Out. What is Beef doing in a book about NBA's strategy, philosophy, skills, and rules? I'm so glad you asked. This chapter is about dribbling, and dribbling was Tim Hardaway's calling card. Hardaway arrived in the NBA in 1989 with a distinctive, wonderfully named signature move. The point guard from the University of Texas El Paso was short and stout and not a terrific shooter, but wielded a crossover dribble so effective at flooring defenders that they called it the UTEP two-step. After Hardaway humiliated a few NBA players with the move, it came to be known as the killer crossover. Here is the best example of Hardaway's crossover from very early in his career. A speedy right-left-right -right dribble to open a driving lane as if by magic. The defender was in the way, but then with a bop bop, he's over here. And that defender was Isaiah Thomas, the premier little point guard of the moment, not to mention an avid crossover artist himself. Hardaway credited Thomas with some inspiration for the move. Isaiah, after getting his ankles broken, said, man, I should steal some of his moves. Which is to say, Tim Hardaway didn't invent the crossover dribble. He just made it his thing. He made it cool for a new era. He proudly took the torch from guys like Isaiah and carried it into the 90s. Hardaway and his killer crossover led a super fast, super fun Golden State Warriors team that got its own nickname, Run TMC. The Warriors made a couple playoff runs, and Hardaway made three consecutive All-Star teams. Nike built whole commercials around Tim's crossover. In this one, he says he's going to be a professor someday. He knows he's qualified because... Every night, I take five guys to school. I think that's a bus driver's job, Tim, but I, I get your point. Anyway, this is stardom. The killer crossover helped Hardaway build his success and his brand. It put points on the board and it sold shoes. As Isaiah Thomas's legendary career concluded, Hardaway looked ready to spend the decade as basketball's premier little guy. And then he got hurt. Hardaway tore a ligament in his knee and missed the entire 93-94 season. When he returned, his team was in disarray. 94-95 was dreadful. Tim's numbers dipped, he hurt his wrists, and the Warriors sucked. Hardaway started a feud with teammates, so Golden State dumped him in a 1996 mid-season trade to the Miami Heat. A big chunk of Hardaway's athletic prime had been wasted on rehabilitation. If I remember correctly, he made the All-Star game, and he was an All-Star in 98 with the Miami Heat, if I'm not mistaken. Rehabilitation and losing. Tim now would have to rebuild his stardom, the success, the reputation, and the brand, basically from scratch. That summer, 
Allen Iverson turned pro. Iverson was, in so many ways, like Tim Hardaway with all the sliders pushed further. Iverson was even smaller, a little faster, a little bouncier, and a lot more popular as a prospect. The Philadelphia 76ers drafted themselves a ready-made star. And when Allen wanted to beat you off the dribble, he wielded a deadly crossover. It looked different from Tim's. Watch how Hardaway splats Avery Johnson by keeping his dribble low, tight, and staccato. Bop, bop, and gone. Prater calls this an in-the-box move. Iverson's legendary rookie year cross-up of Michael Jordan typifies his wider, looser crossover, lulling the defender to sleep with a couple languid, hanging dribbles, then accelerate. One problem, though. The NBA rulebook says a ball handler shall not run without dribbling and, after picking up his dribble, can't start a new one. Iverson's crossover tested that boundary. It drew whistles almost as soon as he tried it on an NBA court. Weeks into Allen's career, NBA officials were studying tape of that wide hanging dribble to see if it constituted a carry. They thought it usually did. Like the officials, media and fans weighed in, which makes sense, it's their job to watch and assess. That wasn't necessarily Tim Hardaway's job, but he, more than anyone else, took up the case against Iverson's crossover. On the occasion of their first ever matchup, Hardaway said the stuff you'd expect from a veteran facing the new hotshot. He wanted to show Iverson he was still a rookie, he took pride in defending him well, just regular competitive stuff. But Tim also specifically called out the crossover. He said Iverson carried the ball. So this establishes two long-running trends. The first is Hardaway relishing his matchup with Iverson and treating it like a rivalry. The rivalry had its moments, but it never turned into beef, perhaps because of the age difference and just minimal overlap. Iverson played like a star immediately, but the Sixers weren't good during his first few seasons. Hardaway, meanwhile, totally rekindled his excellence in Miami. He got back to making all-star teams and even receiving MVP consideration while young Iverson got snubbed. The Heat had some excellent contending seasons and kicked the crap out of the Sixers every time they faced off, for years. By the time Iverson truly took over, 2001, when the Sixers made the finals and Iverson broke out as league MVP and a cultural icon, Hardaway was well into his 30s. His career wound down soon thereafter. They never faced off in the postseason or anything like that. So while Hardaway got up for Sixers games and always had something to say about Iverson's play and sometimes seemed threatened by Iverson's fame, there was never real beef on the court. The stakes just weren't there. However, there's still the second thing. That other trend established the moment Tim Hardaway met Allen Iverson. Throughout Iverson's rookie season, Hardaway played crossover police. Iverson's move is a double dribble. It's a carry. He has to learn. To the extent that Iverson acknowledged this critique, it was always playful. Like Hardaway, Iverson sold sneakers with his crossover. This late 90s Reebok commercial mocks all that belly aching about whether it was a travel. Yeah. And people respect it. Without dribbling it. Yes, that background voice was someone reading from the NBA rulebook, which you don't hear a lot in commercials. When both guys sat down for a TV segment about their crossovers, Tim claimed supremacy. But I still think mine's the sweetest. Iverson didn't seem to care. It's a better crossover then. I would say, um, me and Kobe. Tim's not far away, if not better. Even if Iverson wouldn't take the bait. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I be telling you, I was like, Kobe had a crossover. And Kobe was all around phenomenal ball handler, but he had a mean crossover too. It's the first time I ever heard that, uh, Iverson say that. I, if Iverson would know. Iverson would know. Eight, Hardaway's fixation remained. Here he is on national television in 2000. You just can't let it go. Iverson's dribble is a carry, and that's why they call him. As time passed and Iverson became an icon, his crossover kind of superseded the written rule. Fewer and fewer of his borderline carries got whistled. Other point guards came to emulate that version of the crossover. As in so many other realms, Allen Iverson pulled the game in his direction and everyone kind of moved with it. But not Tim Hardaway, even well after retirement. 
In 2016, Iverson became Hall of Fame eligible. He was an obvious first ballot inductee. Not so for Hardaway. He had been eligible for years, but got passed over again while repenting for some truly nasty stuff he had said in public. Months after Iverson's induction, Hardaway spoke to NBA.com's Scott Howard Cooper. The article stuck to Tim's Hall of Fame disappointment and his lingering hopes of recognition. Hardaway had nothing to say about Iverson beating him to the hall. How could he? Iverson proved to be the better, luckier, more impactful, more successful player. But then, Howard Cooper tweeted an outtake from the interview. There it was again, decades later. Hardaway said Iverson carried the ball on his crossover and planted his flag in this one tiny little corner of history. The crossover isn't his move, it's my move. They're still trying to perfect my move. This is not entirely convincing since, you know, basically everyone gets away with Iverson's looser version of the crossover these days. They're doing Allen's move. Iverson, like always, had jokes, although this one was beefier than usual. Yeah, I carried my crossover, carried it all the way into the Hall of Fame. <laughs> this did not stifle Hardaway's holy war against false crossovers. During a first take appearance in 2019, Stephen A. Smith, a Philly guy, ranked Iverson's move above Hardaway's. Tim attempted in vain to physically correct the record. <laughs> I, I just pull it off. His reasons were the oh. usual. You I'm gonna give it up. I'm gonna give it up. You I'm gonna give it up. Care. I'm gonna give it up. For also. That turned into a debate about overall legacy, but Tim always knew he was beat in that regard. That's why yeah. he stayed on message in future appearances. Well, I think he cared. You know, I just think he cared, and they, let him, you know, and they let him carry. That last bit acknowledged the shift in rules, but Tim insisted organized basketball wasn't the venue for crossover purity anyway. But when you have referees and the NBA high school let you do it, uh, or you know, college let you do it, then it's all right. So you got to roll with it. But in the park, we would have stopped that. And for those reasons, Hardaway would always put himself first in any ranking of crossovers. When Hardaway finally got his Hall of Fame call up in 2022, his speech made no mention of Iverson. But his presenters included the Run TMC guys. Chicago legend Yolanda Griffith, and Isaiah Thomas. I think this holds a key to our beef. Entering the 90s, Hardaway represented a sort of changing of the guard. In taking over as the NBA's best little guy and foremost crossover practitioner, Tim took a moment to pay tribute to Isaiah. But Hardaway's reign ended sooner than he expected. His career hit a snag at the same moment the NBA welcomed a little guy with generational talent a ton of fans, and a literal game-changing crossover. To the extent that Hardaway used his crossover to win games and draw attention, Iverson did it better, and for longer. Hardaway doesn't deny the product, but he continues to nitpick the means of production. Why? Maybe Tim Hardaway envies Allen Iverson's legacy. Maybe Iverson didn't give Hardaway enough credit when he took over, or respect their rivalry quite enough. And yeah. Maybe. Just maybe. Another brilliantly executed masterpiece by Secret Base. Love, love their work, man. It's so easy to follow. So well done. So magnificently paced. So orchestrated. So structured. Love it. Uh, yes, uh, and I knew there was a little bit there, but I didn't know, you know, all the details exactly what was said all the times. Uh, you know, Tim Hardaway spoke out on it, but I really... Never, ever heard much about Allen Iverson giving any rebuttal or responding to it, reacting to it. And that seems to be most of the case. You know, Iverson just took it in joking strides and kept it moving, which is probably the good thing to do. It's it's it, it, it's something that could have got very, very, very petty if they took it to that, like that Shaquille O'Neal level. Like, this is something that Shaq would take to his grave and burn bridges over. But Iverson wasn't that kind of guy. Uh, even Tim Hardaway wasn't that kind of guy like Shaq not even a crossover Shaq talking about the Superman name Superman moniker you know what I mean but uh, my personal opinion now he's right the rules have changed over the years the things players can do today players back in the 70s 80s 60s they couldn't do that stuff there were much more stricter rules on ball handling and dribbling and as the years went by, it became a little bit easier, easier, a little bit more lenient, a little bit more lenient. 
people getting away with more things. Uh, they rarely call travels nowadays. And yeah, technically, yeah, but it is what it is. Me personally, and maybe this is a product of, you know, the era in which I grew up in. When I started watching basketball, I started watching in the 90s. I did see Tim Hardaway, and I saw Tim Hardaway's crossover before I ever saw Allen Iverson's crossover. But when I really started watching Tim Hardaway, like really, really started watching him, was probably when he got to Miami. I didn't see a whole lot of him um, in the run TMC days, at least live. Uh, and then, obviously, I grew up with Allen Iverson. And, see, Allen Iverson crossed a lot of people up. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, let me know what you think about it. Please share your opinion. Shout out to AI for acknowledging Kobe Bryant's crossover package. He has a filthy one. All right? Appreciate y'all for stepping in. I'll catch y'all on the next one. We out, baby.